we've seen how to get Vagrant up and running for uh, Elm's Learning Network, we're going to get into some of the back end of what just happened because it's it's pretty significant. So to get into your Vagrant instance, we're going to do be in the folder where it's located. I have this in Elm's LN slash Vagrant. We're going to do Vagrant SSH, which will uh, log us into the machine. Again, it's a virtual machine running here. You can hit L and see what was created, but uh, Elms LN is where you're going to want to go. So the first thing you're going to do is CD Elms LN, and list again, and you'll see this is actually a checkout and got Git files in here. A checkout of the Elms Learning Network GitHub repository. So during uh, setup, provisioning, whatever you want to call it, of uh, of the VM, it's going to check out the latest version of Elms Learning Network. Uh, after it finishes doing that, it's going to go into uh, it's actually going to delete the config directory because the config directory in Elms Learning Network is mostly just uh, default language and things telling you how to set it up. What it's going to use instead is a thing called Elms LN Config Vagrant, which is also in version control. It's public. Um, but as it says in the notes, never, ever use this in production. Um, and it, I'll show you why in a moment, but uh, quite seriously, you can use this as a model, look at it and say, oh, wow, okay, I see how this is all working, um, but never use this repo in production. This is only for priming a Vagrant instance at this time. Um, so if I go into scripts and then drush create site, uh, there's a config.cfg that actually essentially powers the entire uh, Elms Learning Network install scripts and everything. Um, part of this, though, involves putting in super credentials for a database user um, so that it can go and request databases and things and set itself up initially. Uh, so it has some dummy ones. You know, it's, it's used for use in Vagrant, so just keep that in mind um, when you're using it. So it checked out the config folder. I can go into CD config if uh, I'm already in config. Um, and something that it does as part of its installation routine, it's using that um, that scripts, you know, config.cfg that I mentioned, is uh, we're gonna go into shared, and we'll list, you'll see there's a Drupal 7, and we'll go into Drupal 7, and you'll see we're starting to get into what looks more like a sites all type of directory structure, right? Um, the only exception being settings. So if I go into CD settings, you see there's something called shared settings.php. Uh, this allows you to set, if I open this up, um, everything's commented out, but it's an example of something you could do in terms of um, cache bin management so that every site that's produced in this network has all of these optimizations in place. Uh, every site that's created in Elms Learning Network uh, references this shared settings.php file in case you want to actually share settings. You're not required to, but it's, it's a good idea if you're doing some advanced cache bin management uh, like memcache, uh, APC, or file cache. Uh, so we we'll go back to our Drupal 7 directory. We're going to go into modules. CD modules would help. <laughs> and you'll see if I step through this directory structure here, we've got shared, and we've got Drupal 7, and we've got modules. We've got Vagrant, and we've got a CIS examples folder. Um, but we've got a new one on the box after installation. And you'll see it's called Elms LN scripted, well, underscore. So if you list what's in there, there's a directory called Vagrant to indicate that this was produced for Vagrant. Um, and then there's a Vagrant VU settings. And if we go into that, we'll see it's actually a module that it's authored at runtime. Uh, it uses the values that you're found in your, your scripts, just create site config.cfg. And so it's using the folder structure is the name of the university and the host as VU. So it's actually authoring a module dynamically um, per person that ever installs Vagrant, um, this Vagrant instance rather. Uh, this is also something that happens with Elm's Learning Network is it basically generates um, a connection registry for how it can securely talk to every site in the network. And it's unique to every time that Elm's Learning Network's install script is installed. You can author this module yourself, um, but you'll see why this is so cool here. <laughs> so if we open up this module, um, in the CIS uh, connector module, it's a Drupal.org public module, um, there's something that's 
says, hey, you need to invoke a registry, a service registry. And what this has done is it's authored a module that automatically sets up random passwords uh, to connect to these different things. So um, using REST WS, um, there's basically these services, uh, service user accounts that are created in each site. Well, this is telling the Drupal site in question that has this module installed how to utilize that account to talk to another type of system. And so you'll see here uh, a description of how to talk to it. So we've got protocol HTTP, because this is, again, it doesn't have a cert, this is an offline system. Um, the address in question, so this is if it has to formulate a link to something on CIS, what to use. And then this is the service address, which we'll get into in a minute, in a minute as to how um, the user, the service user account connects. It generates a unique user, which is the form uh, service underscore name of the service, so we've got CIS, underscore uh, that requesting group in question that we saw before in the CFG file. It uh, declares whether or not it's an instance. You'll see there is a password here. Um, we've got the default title for this and whether or not um, to ignore it, which is you know, something we don't need to go into. Uh, so. We've got MOOC distro, and you'll see we've got CLE distro, and we've got i -Core, and we've got Elms Media, and Remote Watchdog. So it's it's set up ways of connecting to all of these different systems and, and expressing it uh, appropriately. The last thing it does is you'll see there's this CIS service instance options alter. Um, this is how you basically connect this into the rest of the systems that are produced. So whenever a new site is requested uh, from Elms Learning Network, the la there's a, a hook that's allowed to fire that says, oh, hey, uh, you know, also run these Drush functions. Uh, well, we're telling it, well, I'm, you know, the last step of setup is install this made up mo new module on CIS. And then CIS is saying through this module, hey, whenever you build a new site, automatically include this module. Uh, so it's kind of an organically created network um, that, you know, is setting itself up. It's got user accounts that are made on, on demand of the system being generated. So we're going to go back into Elms LN at its root, and we're going to, now we're going to look at um, how configuration is actually abstracted and what this config folder is. So when you're updating and managing Elms Learning Network, if, if we're doing our job the right way as developers, these directories should always be able to be updated um, pretty safely. Um, it's, it's the config directory where all of your configuration and you know, all credentials, all site names, anything is listed. Um, everything's kind of daisy chained over there via sim links, and I'll show that in a second here. But um, we've got this notion of uh, stacks in Elms Learning Network. And a stack is basically uh, an assembled version of Drupal Core. Um, so I suggest you read up on DSLM and how that works. It stands for Drush Symlink Manager. Uh, basically, we take one copy of Drupal and symlink it um, like crazy, basically, uh, so that we can optimize APC for one, but also make management a lot easier, make upgrades a lot more manageable um, in terms of lots and lots of sites. Uh, we're talking potential clustering of you know hundreds of Drupal sites, uh, if not thousands, off of a single install. So we go into a stack, and a stack is a combination of Drupal core and one distribution of Drupal. Uh, so if we look at you know what courses is, and again, this is in the config directory, you'll see all we have is an HT access file and, and uh, sites folder. This is because in Drupal core, when you set up Drupal, these are the only two things that if you're not hacking core, uh, that you will still need to change most likely based on where they're implemented. Uh, so we reference back to this folder these things that would change after installation of any Drupal site. So we go into CD sites, you'll see we have a sites.php and we've got default. We can look in default and see there really shouldn't be much in there. There's a settings.php file. Um, we can look in courses and there's nothing in courses, it's just a readme. And so we can go over what that does and why that's there in a bit. Um, but to see where these this whole config directory is uh, referenced, you'll see it's actually, you know, each stack operates this way. So we'll go into one that's a little more meaningful, we'll go into online, because that's the CIS site. And then we'll go into sites, 
and if we vi the sites.php that it automatically generates you'll see that based on its setup routine it's automatically authored these two locations um, elms learning network uh, takes kind of this approach that um, you're grouping things in its you know in its sites directory you're grouping based on the tool that's being built and whether or not it's a service or um or a, a grouping organizer if you will this vu in this case um, if you think of the way that arts and architecture uses this this would be a and a for us right so it's more of like a college grouping it doesn't have to be a college but that's the idea um, so this is then saying, so we don't have to make a folder named online.elms.local and then Drupal finds it. This allows us to map to a folder structure that makes a lot more sense. And so if you're used to you know, seeing sites and then all these ridiculous site names, the way that we're able to handle it because of sites.php is we go into CD online and you'll see there's services uh, versus the grouping organizer, in this case, VU. If we go into VU and we'll list that, we've got settings.php here copy and we'll vi settings.php and we'll go all the way to the bottom of this file you'll see that it sets the base url to online.elmsln.local it also creates a cache prefix this is important if you have advanced cache bins like uh, uh, apc or file cache this automatically authors the the grouping of the site name basically mirrors the data the database name and allows you to reference that uh, and then you see the last thing is this shared settings.php so that all those settings would be inherited into this configuration. If we go back up a level, we're going to look at services because this is all talking via web services. So you'll see under services, we've got VU for grouping again, and uh, we're going to VI that settings.php for the services call there and go down to the bottom. The only real difference between these two is this last line. So whenever you allow for, um, it's called basic HTTP, basic HTTP authentication, I believe. Um, you need a regex in uh, RESTWS to say, hey, don't let just anyone log in this way, right? Because you don't want anyone to issue a, a remote request. Um, this also allows for a more secure environment in which you basically have web service calls all going over uh, kind of an alternate band, if you will, uh, an alternate IP range. Um, so you can more heavily regulate um, you know, basically only allow the IPs in this group to talk to each other. Um, and then also uh, the only accounts that could log in over that range anyway are ones that are prefixed with service underscore, uh, which is how the connection registry has been self-generated during installation. So we're going to go back to Elms LN. We're going to look in the domains folder because this hopefully will start to look a little more like Drupal. And then we're going to look in online. And you'll see this is what our a fully assembled domain uh, is in this. It's you know the online stack, if you will. And so you'll see a lot of symlinks out to other places. This is how we're allowed to or are able to you know, effectively utilize one version of Drupal core um, for this stack. You know, we could we're not going to get into how we're going to manage eight and beyond in this type of a setup. Um, but you'll see if we go into CD profiles, that's one of the few things that's not symlinked, that the profiles themselves are actually symlinked deeper in the structure. So we've got CIS and we've got your, you know, your minimal standard and testing that come with Drupal core. Um, we can back out of that and go to sites and you'll see that these files in sites, uh, default online and sites.php are the ones that we were just talking about before. Everything being referenced back in the config directory. So this makes it a lot easier to develop and um, with the assurance that you're not constantly putting in, you know, okay, ignore settings.phps all over the place and ignore these file directories. Um, you don't have to have complex ign ignores regardless of how many tool sets you have as so long as they're added in this way. And you'll see even the, the HT access file that's included here uh, points back into the config directory. So we're going to step out of that. We're going to go into uh, the database side, what happened during setup. Uh, so cool thing about Vagrant, because you can SSH in, you can also do secure connections through clients such as Navicat. Uh, so after you've set up Elms LN, uh, what it actually did, it went and installed default copies of Drupal. Well, sorry, that one's not, that's Peewee. It installed default copies of Drupal for each of the stacks in question. 
Um, so we've got Courses 1, Interact, Media, and Studio out of the box at the time of this uh, video being produced. Uh, we'll probably have more in the future. So basically, these are required so that Drush can function properly when it goes and does uh, site installs. They, these live in the default uh, default slash settings.php is referencing these. And all they are is a, it's just a vanilla Drupal site just sits there so that it can function properly. Uh, there's an analytics underscore VU, again, for the grouping name. Uh, this has automatically installed PWIC, which we can show uh, in a later video. This is pure dev talk here. Um, the big one, though, is on, online underscore VU. So this is a fully optimized set up to run in Vagrant um, version of the CIS distribution. Uh, the CIS distribution is kind of the, it stands for course information system. It's the routing and, you know, if, if you're familiar with Agar uh, and you have a kind of one site that goes and produces other sites, that's effectively what CIS is to you in this arrangement. So we've got database, we've got a couple other databases here. We've got all these sites that were automatically created. And um, we're now ready to go back into the actual front end side of things and see now that we've got all that set up and we understand what's going on behind the scenes, uh, what is going on with this setup.